Today, uh, I have a great honor uh, to give a short introduction and, can we say, the presentation of undisputed authority uh, in the field of architecture and design uh, and also didactics, Professor Eva Kurovic. Uh, she's the general designer and vice president of uh, the studio Kurovic and Associates, where we are transmitting this lecture from. And um, I should mention that it's one of the most renowned and titled architectural uh, companies in Poland. And uh, Ewa Kurowicz has uh, been uh, in different fields associated with the Faculty of Architecture. For 45 years, uh, she has promoted over 150 diplomas, many doctoral theses, including mine. And some of uh, them still in course of progress, and always combining the architectural practice with uh, theoretical studies. And um, she had been giving great lectures and an example, existing example, how to make our world better and more beautiful. And uh, Professor Kurovic represents a phenomenological philosophy in shaping architecture in which light plays the most crucial role. Today we will listen to uh, the lecture about examples of completed Apa Kurovic buildings um, and we will see how we can operate uh, with daylight to create an essential condition of a healthy indoor environment, sustainable environment, smart living, and how we can reflect the object's path through the play, play of light. I introduce today, today's lecture as a representative from the Warsaw University of Technology. It's not only the oldest, but also the best technical university in Poland, and the strong part of this university is Faculty of Architecture. I was drawing my professional experience in in Kurovic and Associates. I was carrying out my master's degree under the supervision of Professor Kurovic. The professor was also the promoter of my PhD and the book I wrote based on my research received the Grand Prix of the Stefan Kurovic Foundation. At the Faculty of Architecture, I teach design. I run conceptual design classes for the first year of bachelor studies and also some graduate projects and I hope that uh, my students will be listening to this outstanding lecture and maybe to the end of my presentation and uh, introduction um, I try to quote the uh, master of architecture Le Corbusier and will say that um, architecture is the learning game correct and magnificent of forms assembled in the light and there will be the evidence and I give the floor to Professor Eva Kurovic <laughs> and enjoy the lecture, yes. Um, <clears throat> hello, uh, it's a great pleasure for me uh, to be able to talk about uh, our projects uh, from the point of view of uh, how to use uh, light. Uh, daylight, uh, both daylight and artificial light. And I title it Built with Light because uh, uh, we can treat light, even though it is quite immaterial, uh, as a building uh, material. And uh, of course, you know, it sounds like a metaphor, and metaphor it is. But uh, I hope that the examples I'll be showing you uh, will prove uh, that uh, the series a treatment of uh, light uh, can uh, treat it as the uh, serious uh, building material, uh, even it's even though it's so volatile. Uh, the first example uh, I would like to uh, use is the example of uh, using the uh, sunlight and daylight in quite a, a strange uh, manner connected with the film. The task we received uh, some time ago was to uh, design a hotel, a double tree, uh, Hilton, uh, in the very specific location in Łódź. Łódź is a city in Poland, uh, like two hours drive from Warsaw. And uh, the site for the hotel uh, was uh, in the uh, close uh, vicinity of the former film production plant. 
um, not working anymore at that time. This is the site, uh, which you can see, and um, this is how it used to look like. Uh, that building on the left, which says in Polish uh, film production plant, was to be maintained, and uh, the rest of the buildings were to be torn uh, down. Uh, these funny cars from the early 60s uh, show the time when it was uh, still active. Um, Though the uh, film production plant, uh, which uh, now uh, is not working at serves like series of laboratories, uh, after the Second World War, when the, uh, the whole country was rising up from ruins, was very famous for uh, the movie which was uh, produced here. Uh, and uh, even though now, you know, after 70 years, people still remember that movie and it's treated uh, like a romantic icon. And uh, we thought it would be a good idea to uh, think about this old technologies of film production uh, connected with light. When you think about film role and how you develop films, uh, how they are being, how they were being recorded. Uh, that served as a sort of an inspiration and the idea how to use light in this uh, project connected with film uh, and connected, uh, of course, with architecture. Uh, we decided to base ourselves on the movie, which was uh, f the first one uh, produced in this production plant. The title of that film was uh, Forbidden Songs and the yellow poster shows uh, you know, how it was uh, being advertised. And uh, to connect film production and our new architecture, uh, we uh, decided to take one of the shots of the film roll and then to convert it into a sort of a wrapping uh, for the building elevation, of course changing it into a series of pixels and uh, uh, graphically uh, translating it into the series of uh, elevation elements going from uh, dark to uh, white through the different grades of uh, grays. This is the shot which was uh, carefully selected with all in you know, author's right being uh, carefully um, controlled and uh, uh, when the mass of the building, it's quite a big hotel, uh, the mass of the building was uh, sort of finalized. Uh, the, it was cut like you know the how you um, prepare dresses or other uh, pieces of cloth, uh, and uh, after changing it into according to uh, the suggestions of film roll production, uh, the final uh, version of uh, elevation uh, was to look. Uh, like here on this skin. Of course it was uh, processed and uh, changed. Uh, we uh, cooperated with graphic designers and the final result is the building transmitting uh, the idea of uh, uh, film production uh, thanks to the light which goes through the elevation elements with different intensities depending on the uh, opaqueness or transparency of the elements. Uh, this is the sunny day and uh, not too many rooms uh, are lit from the inside. Uh, the light artificial uh, one was also used here uh, to um, emphasize the uh, mass of the building and its recesses which are in it sometimes uh, even uh, you know, for special occasions they were using color light, like here on this picture, and uh, uh, you can see that uh, with some rooms occupied uh, during this uh, night when the picture was taken, uh, still the uh, impression of uh, the uh, film roll and uh, pixels of uh, that film are still uh, possible to read. In the main lobby of uh, the hotel there are still um, different elements um, referring to uh, film, roll of film and animation phases uh, like on, on the white wall uh, to your right. So uh, here light was sort of captured uh, as in the film roll uh, before the film is developed and transferred onto the elevation to remind people that the 
building, which is uh, which has nothing in common with film production, still uh, conveys the meaning of the former uh, film activities which were taking place in this on this site. Uh, the existing element uh, was covered with uh, white panels uh, to uh, show that uh, this is uh, the element which was maintained uh, for. Uh, preservation uh, reasons, to be honest, uh, with uh, history. And uh, even though uh, not, you can't read, you know, that film shop which was taken uh, to be uh, converted, uh, still the associations people have when they look at this elevation uh, have some connections with, uh, with film. Another example of using light as the building material um, can be found in other of our projects located um, in the war one of the Warsaw suburbs, which is called Vilanov, uh, famous for the uh, beautiful Baroque, um, Baroque palace, which I will show you in a second. Uh, but here I would like to show this triangular site, uh, which uh, was the site for the competition in the year 2000 for Vilanov Town Hall. And uh, what is important here when you look at this uh, site plan is the orientation. Uh, the north arrow would go uh, up and uh, the northern uh, part of uh, the site was very important for us because uh, we wanted to use the uh, natural orientation of sunlight, uh, which is not the same uh, when you think about different uh, different uh, sides of, uh, of the world. This is how the palace looks like and the axis of the palace goes parallel to the uh, site. Uh, when you look at the top, this is the top line and the town hall and uh, uh, the accompanying uh, building uh, make the tip of that triangle. The rest uh, is the residential complex, which was planned at that time, but for different investor. Town Hall was to be the investment of Warsaw, Vilanov uh, self-government. And I think that one of the reasons we won that uh, competition was uh, not only the idea how to make this town hall transparent and uh, uh, showing itself uh, to the residents, but also that we divided the complex into two parts. The first one, the town hall itself, and the rectangle, um, which is perpendicular to the axis of the palace, uh, was to be uh, an office uh, building, which would be rented uh, in order to help to uh, maintain uh, the uh, building of, of the town hall. Uh, we decided to put these two buildings on one uh, garage and use the plaza in between them, uh, partially covered with the roof as a sort of amphitheater, so that people might come and uh, uh, watch the performances, uh, which would uh, uh, happen in the small theater, which is on the ground floor. This is the final result and uh, the, how the idea of transparency was uh, being realized. The block, uh, which uh, is uh, facing north, uh, is, makes the whole circulation space for the building and uh, is, uh, with a big transparency, shows everything what is happening in the building. The rest of the elevation, uh, which is opaque and uh, uh, with uh, squares of windows, uh, is made by offices and uh, uh, doesn't have to be uh, accessible to the uh, residents. The entrance for the residents is to this glass part and uh, not necessarily at dusk like on this picture, but they always can see uh, what is going on inside. Here you can see this uh, a small amphitheater covered uh, with the roof and uh, the sliding doors which are now black uh, of the small uh, theater uh, for the uh, performances inside. Uh, from the north during the winter uh, at when sun goes uh, down quite uh, early the artificial lighting, which is uh, 
Additionally, uh, lighting illuminating the space shows uh, the uh, counters, the places where uh, people uh, can uh, uh, come and um, in, talk to the clerks in different, uh, on different problems, and the staircase leading up uh, to uh, some, some space which is uh, called uh, the wedding palace. This is where the weddings uh, take place. Uh, not necessarily in the church. This is how the lobby looks like with the view to the uh, palace complex. And uh, again, um, the uh, main circulation uh, hall and uh, everything uh, which can be seen even from the distance. So uh, people can uh, control what their representatives are uh, doing here and they can also participate in uh, how the uh, district is being run. A beautiful uh, sky uh, shows the, uh, of course, western uh, part of uh, Vilanov district and shows uh, how uh, the building sort of melts in uh, to the surroundings. Uh, you know, here at our office we pay much attention to uh, accessibility of buildings. And uh, this one uh, was awarded the prize for uh, accessibility to our great joy. And this uh, is um, also important in this project I will show you, where we uh, asked Daylight uh, to help us uh, uh, make the uh, stone move. Uh, this is the complex uh, which uh, was designed um, on the site of the former natural gas producing company in Warsaw. And uh, they wanted to have the new office tower and also the residential complex. It's located in the beautiful part of Warsaw, Powiśle, where uh, Wisła, Vistula River goes uh, to our right and to the left uh, we'll have a uh, famous Warsaw escarpment. Uh, this is uh, how the uh, office uh, block looks like. And uh, here, you know, as in the uh, Double Tree Hotel in Wuch, where we wanted uh, the building to convey a message of uh, the history of the site uh, where it was designed. Also here, all the efforts were uh, put into uh, trying to uh, show that uh, the site was the former site of uh, uh, production and uh, selling of the natural gas. And that was done thanks to uh, the daylight and thanks to the geometry of vertical panels which make the rhythm of the elevation and thanks to uh, their shape, geometrical shape and different planes, they uh, uh, being lit uh, from the different corners, of course depending on the time of the day, uh, they make uh, this uh, wall uh, volatile, just like the uh, gas is. Uh, well, uh, right now the building uh, doesn't uh, uh, serve as the uh, seat of uh, this gas production company. It was sold to again to authorities of Warsaw, and uh, we hope that people can understand, you know, this dynamic uh, arrangement of lighting fixtures, which was also referring to. Uh, the uh, violent nature of natural gas. We will remain on Powiśle district uh, again <clears throat> and um, starting uh, from how the competition started for the building of neophilological departments uh, close to uh, newly at that time uh, constructed Central Library of uh, Warsaw University, which you can see uh, as the closest one with the green uh, green walls and um, roof garden. Uh, it, the picture was taken during the winter and uh, everything is covered uh, uh, with the snow, but uh, well, I hope that still you can see some elements uh, creating that really uh, spectacular and beautiful garden. Uh, on the top of the escarpment, which you can see on the left, there is the historical part of the University of Warsaw. 
and uh, the site shown was a site uh, uh, which was designated uh, for the competition which uh, took place in the year 2006 uh, for the big complex of um, uh, neophilological departments uh, of the surface of uh, 42,000 square meters on two uh, levels below the ground and uh, uh, three levels above the ground. Uh, the task was uh, really difficult because the site was not too big and the program, the functional program was really vast. And of course, since uh, it was the university building, uh, there had to be lots of daylight inside. Uh, so uh, our idea was based upon uh, sort of a Japanese approach, uh, which is that when we have the site, we take everything 100% and then we look for uh, the openings inside uh, in order to make the maximum uh, um, profit of uh, what we have uh, at our disposal. And the, since the uh, Central Library of Warsaw was such a magnet which really uh, helped to develop not only the university but uh, the whole uh, Powisla district, we wanted to uh, our building to make a sort of a urban link between the historical campus and the central library and to <coughs> drill in it five courtyards in order to uh, have the daylight not only on the perimeter but also coming uh, from the inside of these courtyards. Uh, the model, which is quite uh, ancient because the competition took place in 2006, uh, but it's historical so I wanted to show it uh, and you know this is how we imagined uh, the building, uh, the whole complex. Uh, from the very beginning the uh, scheme was that it would be realized in phases. The phase one uh, was to be, uh, well, um, to uh, make it a clear one courtyard and a half and three other courtiers and uh, the remaining half were to be realized during the stage number two. And we hoped at the time that uh, stage uh, second, the stage two, uh, will immediately follow the stage realizing the stage number one. Uh, it didn't happen that way uh, and we had to wait uh, 16 years to see the whole building finished. But, you know, being an architect um, in different parts of the world, I think that people are used to uh, that phenomenon, that uh, it's not that everything goes fluently uh, as you might uh, dream and imagine. Uh, <clears throat> the promenade was one of the uh, elements of the spine of the spatial structure of the building. The other one was the uh, idea for the southern elevation. Uh, which uh, was to be um, inspired by um, the uh, arbor, the garden arbor. Uh, but besides, I'll talk about uh, this wall uh, later on briefly. Uh, the other element of the idea was connecting uh, the gardens planned in the courtyard with the culture of the different departments which would be located here. So. Uh, Slavic garden which would uh, would be um, surrounded by uh, Slavic uh, studies. Uh, German uh, garden Hortus Inclusus would be surrounded by German uh, philology and, and so forth. English by English culture, French garden uh, which is uh, quite <coughs> famous uh, would be surrounded by uh, French uh, studies. And uh, uh, the other element of the idea, since we had this library of Warsaw uh, close to us, we wanted, uh, of course, uh, to have the usable roof uh, covered with the garden. Not so uh, spectacular, we knew, because the budget of the project was different, but uh, also uh, the uh, rooftop, which would be open to the users and uh, which would be an element of the uh, common spaces of the building. The inspiration for the most difficult wall here, the southern one, uh, came from uh, the Polish painter called uh, Alexander Gierymski and his famous picture uh, on Garden Arbor. 
and uh, the idea of uh, that uh, light being uh, sort of uh, filtrated through the lattice of the arbor walls uh, was translated by us into the double skin facade, the southern one, in order to uh, make a barrier for the temperature of uh, sunlight and in order to have this uh, impression of uh, this light like in the garden arbor. <clears throat> the first phase, uh, and here on the plan you can see the uh, promenade and uh, uh, the other element of the idea uh, uh, connecting the historical campus with the library was to uh, draw the reading rooms and libraries from different institutes and to put them, to locate them along the promenade on the ground level. Uh, since the building uh, was to be so huge, uh, we wanted to use the color codes uh, to uh, help people navigate uh, through its uh, structure. <clears throat> and uh, the colors used for um, the stage number one were also the colors which were uh, appearing on the southern wall. It was uh, green and uh, orange. Uh, the other problem uh, resulting from a really very, very rich program was that uh, due to the height limits uh, in this area, we needed to put some functional uh, classrooms and seminars below the ground level. So the proportions of the courtyards uh, we had were very carefully studied in order to have enough amount of uh, daylight uh, for uh, the purposes of studies. Uh, the color codes uh, were very carefully studied by us and uh, uh, we uh, tried to um, make the um, complexes like, uh, you know, the, this is the working phase of preparing the mood boards, uh, trying to find the colors uh, of different uh, textures and different finishing materials in the interiors, both in orange and both in uh, green. Uh, great, this is the uh, one of the last phases of uh, building construction and uh, uh, the finished uh, finished uh, stage number one uh, with this green and orange walls leading to different functional uh, complexes and uh, this gives me an opportunity to show people who were very important in uh, that project, structural engineer who uh, uh, cooperated with us for the whole process, uh, uh, Dr. Piotr Pachowski and uh, our colleague Krystyna Tulczyńska who was uh, supervising architect during the whole phase number uh, one. Uh, we wanted to our building to be in the dialogue with the central library, not only to lead to it, but also to uh, have some uh, connections. And uh, our elevation reflects the elevation of the uh, central library. And also uh, the principle of the uh, entrances uh, is similar. We uh, made uh, people to sort of uh, uh, slit in uh, the uh, openings and then to turn uh, right or left. This is how the phase one uh, looked when uh, it was waiting for uh, being finished. Uh, and uh, uh, the other uh, part uh, of the building overlooking north uh, on which we wanted to uh, make uh, the dots of sunlight which would never enter here because of the uh, orientation. But that yellow color uh, was important for us in the stage number two, which finally, after many years of break, uh, started in the year 2016, when luckily for us and for the university, uh, the you know, university uh, received vast amount of money from Polish Prime Minister and the first building to be finished was our neophilology. During this uh, four years, because the first phase one was finished in 2011, uh, there was enough time to make some studies and uh, the big change in educational methods happened 
and the university asked us for uh, changes in the interiors, which uh, made us very happy because, you know, this small uh, um, offices and small seminar rooms and classrooms in the face uh, number one and very narrow corridors, uh, which we had to uh, design, did not make us too happy. And now uh, we could um, design uh, lots of common spaces, open ones, and uh, to, we could reduce the number of small seminar rooms and classrooms to make an auditorium which would be opened and uh, to have lots of uh, spaces uh, um, uh, as uh, working, you know, as a sort of integrating spaces. The idea of the courtyards remain, even though uh, their uh, cultural appeal uh, has changed a bit. And the, the fifth courtyard was to be covered uh, due to uh, the idea how to uh, connect all these uh, common spaces. Um, you know, what uh, made the whole process quite difficult was that the realization of the stage number two uh, took place uh, during the pandemic times. But here you can see uh, in the first uh, plane, Magda Yuzhevska, who was um, almost living uh, on, the, in this, uh, on this building site, and uh, Darek Grita, who uh, was her uh, helper during the whole process. Uh, I think we owe a lot to Magda because uh, she, uh, even though uh, there were many problems connected with pandemic and other um, things, um, she managed to uh, realize it, to conduct all the project uh, as it was designed. This is the whole building uh, and uh, the structure uh, of the wall to the left uh, is this double skin with these colored foils and uh, the right side shows the inside of the building, the detail of it uh, with the ventilation element and uh, how it looks like at dusk uh, where uh, when you can see the sort of a bent uh, we made um, from the very beginning in order to uh, make the very long wall appear uh, shorter, just like a twig. Uh, of a tree branch. Uh, this is the next and now main entrance from uh, Brovarna Street. Uh, this was taken, the picture was taken at dusk, but uh, uh, light plays a major uh, role here in the architecture of this building. Because of uh, the changes in the interiors, we had to change the structural system. And uh, referring to the industrial past of Povichle, uh, we decided to make all these beams uh, visible so that everybody could see how the building works. And uh, the idea in the stage number two uh, to finish the uh, walls was uh, just to continue them as they were designed when the building received its building permit. When you enter the building, this is uh, on the ground floor, this is what you see. This is how uh, the auditorium looks like. And uh, adjacent to that uh, former courtyard, uh, now covered with glass, uh, which we call an Australian one, with a boomerang-like um, uh, bench. And uh, uh, this is how it connects with the spaces of different floors. And uh, it overlooks the historical campus, the beautiful park and the greenery uh, through the uh, sort of a, uh, a moat uh, between the edges of uh, the different floors and uh, the exterior wall. We decided that the leading color in the stage number two uh, will be the yellow one, the one which was on the northern facade. Uh, creating these artificial sun spots. And uh, it was used uh, everywhere. Uh, this is the level minus one below this auditorium uh, for informal uh, meetings of uh, students. And they like to use it uh, to our great, great happiness and joy. Also, in this, with this yellow color, uh, there was uh, the uh, orientation wayfinding system uh, designed. Uh, since it's uh, the neophilological department, 
the graphics were made with the use of diacritical signs. And uh, this is the uh, top level and the yellow stairs are the stairs uh, uh, which lead to um, to the rooftop. This is one of the courtyards, the new one, so the greenery is not too uh, rich, but it will change. The corridors uh, between the rows of rooms, uh, also with the benches, and uh, since they are wider, uh, they uh, introduce lots of light. The Australian covered um, uh, the courtyard and uh, upstairs on the rooftop, there is also an amphitheater overlooking the historical campus. Uh, hopefully it will be used during the summertime. And I'm sure that now, since uh, we have such a beautiful, as we call it, golden autumn, uh, Indian summer in uh, uh, other cultures, uh, maybe people were sitting down here also today. Um, this is how the stairs look like from the different angle and uh, the beginning of uh, growing the garden on the top with a very unique view uh, at the Warsaw Old Town and cathedrals and uh, historical churches. It is possible to see only from our roof. So hopefully people will visit their building, not only the students but the others. The entrance from Brovarna <coughs> showing the ramp leading to um, to the ground floor and uh, the stairs uh, the stairs had to be added because of the topography of the site and this is how the building makes its presence in Povishla district inviting with its uh, vibrant colors and uh, well lit uh, spaces and making people uh, that's what I heard dream that they might study again um, the other uh, kind of light I would like to um, uh, show during this uh, today's presentation is a different one and connected with uh, what light uh, can uh, make uh, in creating the symbolic perception. There was a very interesting competition uh, in Warsaw in the year 2008 uh, for commemorating uh, the Pope John Paul II visit in Warsaw. And uh, the competition brief called for the for design of a cross. And uh, we um, decided that uh, we would like to propose the cross which would not be uh, the flat one or you know three-dimensional, but a cross as it is known from uh, different uh, different uh, presentations, the passion cross. But instead, there, there is two kinds of crosses in the um, uh, Christian religion. One is the Passion Cross and the other one is the Cross of Light or Luminous Cross. And uh, we wanted to uh, use the second one and to uh, sort of translate with the use of light and daylight and space to translate the uh, shape of cross into something three-dimensional which could be perceived um, thanks to the sunlight and the feeling of the space. And this is how we visualized how it would look like uh, on Piusutskiego Square, close to Saski Garden, uh, during the day and during the night. Well, the jury uh, apparently didn't like our proposal, so we didn't get any awards, but we like this project very much. And uh, it makes a very interesting experimental uh, space uh, to make uh, the signs uh, and symbols are perceptible uh, for everyone, not only for people who can see, but also for people who don't have this possibility, but they receive space and other sensations through the different uh, ways and different channels. And uh, another uh, kind of light, uh, I would like to refer to, and this will be the last example um, I will show. Uh, I call the mysterious light. Uh, why mysterious? Because it's connected with art, and um, it's the light which we uh, wanted to uh, use and uh, make work in the uh, National Music Forum in Wrocław. Also the result of the competition uh, we won and then uh, realized the building 
in this case we didn't have to wait so long as with the university building in Warsaw, but still uh, the process was quite long. It took almost uh, 10 years. Uh, the idea for the building uh, was to house music and uh, to make uh, the a perception of music as a, a sort of a feast for everyone. Uh, there is a difference between listening to the music which is uh, being is heard from the radio or from from uh, from different uh, tapes, uh, then to go and to listen to the live music performed by artists and musicians. And uh, this was the part of the uh, idea for their building. The other one was uh, to show that it sort of raises up from uh, the uh, ground of city of Wrocław, which is uh, very much connected with music. And uh, we wanted to emphasize that with the form of the building. Uh, the building is quite uh, compact and the only opening and uh, eye to the city, uh, except for these horizontal slots, uh, is the entrance wall, uh, which makes a sort of an eye. Eye, uh, which gives the light uh, for people who enter the building and go down uh, the main staircase, staircase to the um, uh, uh, concert hall. And um, an eye, which also works as a sort of a connector between this uh, space devoted for art and the living city, uh, which uh, even though very much a musical one still is a city uh, uh, being absorbed with different actions that people undertake. And there is um, lots of greenery on one side of, of the building and uh, um, the mm, glass fragment uh, covering that eye was also to reflect the uh, sky and uh, sun and make the building, uh, in spite of its uh, big volume, the part of the uh, surrounding space. Uh, this is also the double skin facade uh, and uh, the hole. And here you can see the uh, staircase going down and uh, that even though uh, that opening is not too big, uh, still the big plaza in front of the building can be easily shown. Uh, the first drawing was the uh, computer rendering and here we have the realized uh, hole and the wall which is uh, made of Korean polished one reflecting uh, the light and different levels of um, galleries uh, leading to uh, different rooms to different levels of the concert hall. There are two other smaller concert uh, halls uh, below the ground. Uh, but of course the main one for 1800 uh, spectators is behind that um, uh, black wall and this is how uh, it looks when you enter it. This one doesn't have any daylight access but the daylight uh, enters and uh, even at dusk enters through the slots and through that big uh, glass opening. Um, this is the other view of um, this uh, double skin facade and uh, this is how uh, it works when uh, the eye gets alive and uh, there are many concerts which are uh, organized uh, on the plaza in front of the building and um, that shows uh, that uh, thanks to the uh, light and openings and the name of the concert is Alchemy of Light. So something to uh, make a sort of a summary uh, of that uh, presentation I prepared for you uh, because light is not only uh, that material I referred to at the beginning of the lecture but uh, it's got so many associations and so many possibilities and its own alchemy uh, that when it's uh, properly used, uh, even uh, both for daylight or for artificial light, that makes it an equal and I think most important uh, building element uh, for uh, architecture and architects. Uh, thank you very much for your attention. I hope you um, like the examples. 
Okay, I guess that's the time um, for questions. And uh, um, maybe uh, I will follow a lot of them and try to choose the main one uh, and curate it a bit. Uh, so um, here uh, is the quiet enigmatic question, but uh, I would like to develop it. Uh, and the question sounds, what is with yellow color? And I will develop it qu this question in a way, uh, how uh, we can treat colors in context of daylight in architecture. Uh -huh. I understand that the question is why that particular yes, color was mm -hmm. uh, selected for that interior. Yes. I tried to refer to it <laughs> during my presentation, but I will um, say a few more words. Uh, we wanted that building to be full of colors in order to uh, identify the functional uh, sections. And uh, uh, in the fa uh, phase number one, in the stage number one, we uh, used uh, two or three uh, colors, the green one, the orange one, and the yellow one. Uh, it, would be, it was not on the pictures, but it's still present, as it is on the elevation. And um, after these consultations uh, we had, uh, the um, uh, university, and you know, uh, there was a post-occupancy evaluation and lots of debates and uh, uh, working groups uh, talking to us. Uh, they had too much time, you know, I think three years is lots of time. <laughs> yeah, so they said, well, you know, these colors are fine, but uh, it's too many of them. And, um, you know, people here in Poland are not used to uh, colorful uh, buildings. And they said, I th we think that it would be better to stay with one as a leading one. And uh, it was up to us to choose. Uh, that leading color for the stage number two. And since we had this uh, artificial sun spots on the northern elevation, uh, we thought that uh, yellow uh, color would be the best one. It's uh, the, well, there is whole theory of colors, but what was important for us uh, was the fact that the combination of gray and yellow makes the best contrasts for people who have problems uh, with uh, eyesight. And uh, the University of Warsaw uh, is very famous for being open and accessible for studies for many disabled students, students with disabilities, as we say now. And many of them are uh, blind or semi-blind, and many of them study uh, these neophilological departments. So uh, we thought that uh, you, the use of yellow, uh, both for orientation and wayfinding, and uh, for warning, and for uh, showing uh, the most important places to facilitate the use of the space by people uh, with uh, vision impairments, would be the best choice. And uh, there was, uh, the, these were the reasons of using yellow. And uh, yellow is a very happy color, the color of sun. And uh, I think that uh, it would be difficult to find people who don't like it. If they said they don't, uh, I would ask them, why is that so? Yes, uh, I think that uh, I should say uh, some words about uh, design for disabilities because uh, it's the fact the the thing I had no time to mention. However, uh, Professor Ifa Kurovic is also an expert, and uh, uh, she uh, uh, has been leading for years lectures about universal design and I guess that uh, this aspe aspect is very visible in projects which was presented. And the next question uh, I had chosen from the list uh, is about uh, challenges and uh, how you consider uh, these challenges when it comes to uh, utilizing, uh, utilizing a large quantities of material such as glass in buildings. So about, yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, yes, <coughs> I understand the intention mm -hmm. of the question. 
uh, that uh, now uh, because of the uh, climate crisis and uh, everything what we know about the energy in buildings, uh, we are trying to reduce uh, the use of glass and uh, these famous glass houses and uh, you know uh, Philip Johnson in uh, Connecticut is definitely the thing of the past. But here in this building, uh, uh, glass is used only for one wall, well two walls, but the other one is eastern. And uh, uh, it's a double skin wall, so uh, with the use of Vanceva foil, this is this colored foils. Uh, that uh, makes the material which makes a good barrier for sun uh, helping in saving energy. And then uh, there was no time to explain all the ecological systems which are used in the building. Uh, passive uh, energy collectors, uh, ground pumps uh, and all kinds of things which make the uh, savings of energy possible. Uh, everything what is going on now um, connected uh, with the use of energy and um, the uh, production of um, CO2 uh, is uh, a challenge for architects because nobody really wants how to do it. Uh, we are, uh, after uh, some uh, designs, uh, I didn't show them today because these um, projects are still not realized. They are still on the paper, but uh, hopefully they will see the daylight being uh, transferred into the three-dimensional form uh, where uh, we use uh, different uh, techniques and types. And the first uh, challenge for us was in 2017, I guess, if I remember it well, there was a competition, uh, international competition for the seat of uh, European Parliament in Brussels. And uh, in that case, it was a very big complex of buildings, uh, 160,000 square meters. And uh, we entered that competition and we got to the final phase. Uh, unfortunately, we didn't win, but we were among the six chosen. And uh, in that case, uh, we cooperated with the uh, uh, Bureau Hapold, uh, which uh, made the whole design as producing zero uh, energy waste. So uh, this is really something very new. Uh, everybody needs to learn how to deal with and uh, definitely it will influence the architecture of the building to be buildings to be uh, realized in the future. That's for sure. Yeah. <coughs> I will try to connect this uh, former question with the next one because uh, there is the question about finishing materials apart from glass. Uh, you would recommend for maximizing light in interiors. Um, yes, uh, and uh, there is the second part. Is a full glass facade uh, necessary? However, the first part is... More well, uh, I uh, told you the history of the uh, project. Uh, I'm sure that if we started that design uh, later, it will look in a different way. But we started in this uh, in the year 2006. The building permit was issued in 2008. And at that time, nobody discussed uh, uh, the goods or bads of um, uh, different types of building materials with the reference to glass. And uh, I think still that we did everything we could uh, to uh, change the glass into something what is not so uh, dangerous for the climate inside of the building. Uh, and uh, this is all you know I can say. Uh, referring to the other part of the question, uh, with the finishing materials uh, in order to um, draw uh, more light uh, into the interior, uh, this is you know a very delicate. Uh, thing because uh, one might think well the polished surfaces uh, which uh, uh, not only uh, draw the light but also reflect it would be very good but they are quite dangerous for people who have problems with their vision and uh, the glare uh, which is produced by the polished surfaces like stainless steel or um, pure glass or 
uh, mirroring glass are really dangerous for these people. They lost, they lose their orientation and they cannot use these spaces. Uh, so many architects uh, forget about that and there are still many new realizations uh, with the uh, uh, bottoms of um, cantilevered parts which are still finished, uh, like, let's say, with a uh, polished uh, steel. And um, this is something what we need to uh, consider. Um, the, well, all kinds of wooden finishes now prove to be the best ones. Uh, because or thanks to uh, their acoustical qualities, thanks to their um, uh, tactile qualities and thanks to the um, um, main, uh, possibility to maintain the temperatures inside. Uh, so, uh, you know, the uh, use of wood uh, will be very wide in the future and uh, right now there are people who are scared that there's not enough woods and forests on the, on the earth uh, to uh, produce uh, that needed amount of uh, wood. Okay, and... Uh uh, I guess that uh, in the end uh, I have kind of a group of questions about uh, your favorite things, can we say, uh, from buildings uh, to uh, uh, some uh, courses and lectures, etc. And maybe because I will uh, remain your student forever, I will overtake the occasion to ask my own question. Um, about favorite things and I would ask about your favorite uh, lecture or course or topic you uh, had been uh, teaching at our university. No, oh, okay. Uh, you know, I come from the teacher's family. According to daylight. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so uh, teaching was in my blood, I think. Uh, even though my father, who was also a university professor, was a mechanical engineer and uh, he would teach uh, something entirely different. Uh, but um, I think, first of all, that uh, it is possible to teach architectural design when you are a practicing architect because you know what you are talking about. On the other hand, uh, there is a big, big need to uh, enrich uh, everything what you know um, in uh, terms of theory and uh, it's uh, not, not enough to uh, have this theory which is uh, uh, taken from the university courses but you need to study it and to um, uh, make your own if you want really to teach the students. So uh, I, I uh, taught different courses uh, first uh, year uh, freshman students, then sophomore, then uh, junior students, and then diploma students the, on the master course. And uh, I have to say that my favorite would al always remain the first year when people start uh, entering the realm of architecture. And, uh, uh, you know, we had this funny uh, saying that we need to re-educate them. We need to show them uh, how to look at the world in an entirely different way. Uh, uh, just as, as the architect should, uh, knowing that uh, uh, if we want to uh, create the world good for people and beautiful for them and uh, um, con uh, comfortable, we need to uh, understand this world from, from the very beginning. Uh, because uh, you know the windows and the doors were invented by someone in the shape as we know them. And there had to be someone who was first to say, OK, I have the volume of a building and I need to enter it, so I have to make an opening. So uh, I think that our approach uh, is quite conceptual. Um, some people would say quite artistic, because uh, architecture is both art and science. And uh, even though here in Poland it's uh, treated as the expert knowledge, yeah, and uh, it becomes art only when uh, there is a competition for the pavilion at the Venice Biennale. 
uh, this uh, element of art is very, very important uh, in architecture. So the f beginning of the studies and then the end. Um, uh, working with the diploma students and uh, going with them uh, very often with their uh, favorite and uh, one and only in life theme to, uh, to design. Uh, because as we know later on, uh, I know architects uh, have to fight for uh, the um, commissions and tasks in different ways, in the form of competitions or, or uh, in the other business manner. And uh, the diploma uh, people make at the, at the end of their studies is uh, for many an opportunity to uh, express themselves and uh, to design something um, uh, which uh, is their, the expression of uh, what they think about architecture, a sort of a manifesto mm -hmm. with the use of you know, different, different pretexts, different tasks. Maybe the last one, however we are. <laughs> uh, uh, we have no time, I guess, uh, but I think it's uh, very interesting. Uh, how do you think uh, architecture can help people to find their place in a spiritual way, in not religious? How light, there is also about textures and colors, however, maybe we will focus on light uh, today, uh, can improve the meaning of existence? And yes, uh, it was according to visiting uh, the library and uh, having an attempt uh, or uh, maybe uh, the feeling to study again? Um, you know, uh, when we started, when I started uh, the course with the freshman students, I remember I gave them the question, what is the less expensive material which is uh, used in the stained glass windows in the religious buildings? And, uh, you know, the answers would come different. Uh, they would say, mm, the paint or uh, the um, lead, which uh, was used to uh, connect the glass parts. And of course, the answer was no, sunlight, because it's for free. And uh, mm, uh, of course, now uh, they would know the answer because the question uh, <laughs> was repeated <laughs> with many, many, uh, many groups. Uh, but uh, there is no life without daylight. And, uh, you know, sometimes I think uh, about the places I visited. Uh, it was in Ukraine. It's, I don't know the English name for that. Uh, in uh, Ukrainian, it's called Peterskaya Wavra. It's a sort of a monastery uh, in the uh, suburbs of Kiev. Mm -hmm. I hope that uh, the Russians didn't ruin it because of these bombardments. And uh, that showed uh, how people could live the generations of uh, uh, monks which would come uh, entirely without any daylight access because of the um, uh, threat of uh, invading uh, Tatar um, groups. There was a time of war, it was uh, I think the 12th or 13th century in this part of, uh, of uh, our globe. And uh, they uh, were brought there being infant babies, or even they were born there. And then they would spend their whole life without even knowing that there is something like sunlight and they would be buried there. Uh, it's a shocking uh, impression when you visit such a place because uh, that shows that it's possible to live without uh, knowing uh, about daylight. And uh, this is a very extreme case, but still it happened. And um, the, I think that uh, you know people will have to master uh, because of this uh, climate crisis. Uh, architects uh, will have to master how to use the daylight in order to um, make the use of it very efficient and uh, with a reduced uh, amount of uh, energy. Uh, sometimes uh, it comes to my mind that uh, it's uh, good to study the old examples, uh, like um, uh, making buildings on the islands uh, surrounded by water uh, and with small openings, uh, saving energy inside and the water reflecting the light and uh, uh, magnifying its influence in the interior. So 
um, I think that uh, we are um, awaiting many, many uh, new inventions and um, maybe some of these inventions will go back to the history of building. Yes, I think that it's beautiful summarizing <laughs> of the lecture and uh, what I feel also quite close to my heart because two years ago we had um, an occasion to uh, make a competition with students of Vlux uh, during uh, the full lockdown in Warsaw. And uh, we uh, tried to find a, a new challenge, how to design uh, something according to daylight to make people feeling better just in everyday life. And I guess that uh, this whole solution and challenges uh, Professor Kurovic mentioned, and also in context of a huge catastrophe of whole environment we are expecting and experiencing now uh, the daylight uh, is very important aspect in design and architecture yes so thank you very much thank you <laughs> yes